Hey guys, so today I'm basically gonna be showing you how to date uh, vintage sweats. These are all sweats that range from like the late 50s to um, the late 70s. And I'd basically like to tell some features about these sweats, which tells them uh, what the age is. So uh, we're gonna start basically at this one, which is kind of a textbook. Um, 60s sweat besides a few things um, this one could actually maybe date back to the late 50s um, but I basically like to tell you why this sweat is in particular is from the 60s um, or like I said could even be late 50s but I would call this one in particular uh, just 60s because you don't want to misdate sweats that honestly pisses me off when I see accounts on Instagram and just people in general misdating sweats because they're not educated enough um, and it'll piss off your buyers and your customers that are trying to buy truthfully. Um, so yeah, let me tell you. So first of all, these two are dead giveaways. <laughs> the Conmar zipper dates back to, I think I looked it up, it dates back to 1954 to the mid 60s. Um, but I don't believe this sweat is from the 50s because I actually looked at this tag and I found a pair of underwear, which with pretty much almost an identical tag um, dated 1960 as a copyright date. Um, so let me get into this. So like I said, the piling is one indicator of its age. Um, the long ribbing on the bottom and on the sleeves is also an indicator. Um, we could go back to this sweat right here, which has really short ribbing compared to this one, which is really long. Um, also, it's double stitched on each hem. And the only thing that's really not textbook about this sweat is the stitching on the sleeves. Usually when you see a 60s sweat, it's not going to be single stitch like this. It's going to be overlock stitch. Um, but that's not really a big deal because this uh, interior is almost a dead giveaway of its age. Um, and also the ribbing and everything else. Um, you know, it's a lot of evidence that tells me that this sweat is from the 60s. So moving on from that sweat, let's move on to a late 60s sweat. So this sweat is from the late 60s. So I'd like to explain why. Um, first of all, we have the double stitched hem at the bottom. If it doesn't have this double stitched hem, it is 100% not from the 60s. I'm pretty sure even Hanes Breeze Shield um, sweats are double stitched on the bottom. Um, they have single stitched uh, cuts right here, um, which uh, is very weird for a older sweat. And they usually date back to the 50s or 60s. Um, you can also see inside here, the piling and also has a tag, which is also sort of like a dead giveaway. That is from the late 60s, could even be early 70s, but I would definitely 100% say 60s because it has all the features of a 60s sweat. Um, it has this like overlock stitching on the cut all the way down. It also has the overlock stitching going up and right into the sleeve. And it has the overlock stitching going around the sleeve, which is all indicators that it is a 60s sweat so let's move on to another sweat so we're going up in age here so this sweat could firmly be dated 60s or 70s and there's many indicators on why this sweat would be considered like early 70s this in particular is a kid's sweat but there's a lot of indicators that tell me that this sweat's old but it's not as old as some of these. So let's go into detail. So as you can see, it has this overlock stitching that goes all the way down. It doesn't go all the way up though. It doesn't go all the way up to the sleeve. The sleeve is not overlock stitch, it's single stitch, which they got rid of, uh, most companies got rid of the overlock stitch after the 60s. As you can see with this sweat, it has the overlock going up. So that's the example. But another thing that tells me that it does still have a lot of features of a 60s sweat is the stitching on the collar. I mean, it's pretty um, close to this one. Um, it's not 100% exact, but it's pretty close. 
also the graphic looks old um it's an old looking graphic um that's not a huge indicator but it is somewhat of an indicator um and the the way that it's stitched right here it also tells me it's kind of like i said late 60s early 70s and it still kind of has this like neat and organized piling in it um so yeah we go in here it doesn't have that distinctive stitching that all these 60s sweats have it has a sort of raised stitching on it which again tells me that it's not from a firm 60s date like it could probably this sweat could probably range from like 1968 to like 19 maybe 74 or 75 to be honest um no later no earlier um but it's probably early 70s just because of that piling but this stitching tells me a lot and um the single stitch tells me a lot about this sweat those are the two most important things on this sweat that indicates its date so moving on to this sweat this is a 70s hoodie this one's firmly from the 70s it's not from the 60s um it could even be early 80s but i don't think it is um this sweat is commonly misdated as i think yeah people commonly misdate this sweat as 60s which i don't really understand i'm not getting into that mess um but i think this sweat's from the 70s so i'll basically explain why so first of all there's no evidence on the tag we can't really tell what the tag is but we do know it's made of paper so it could be like some sort of uh i don't know <laughs> it'd be it'd be kind of bold to make an assumption of what that tag used to be but the first dead giveaway that this is a newer sweat is the piling which is super pilled compared to like I said, every other sweat that we've looked at, every other sweat has neat piling, pilled. Even this one that's a little bit earlier has better piling. The piling is still good. And we even look at this sweat that we reviewed, right? It still has a lot of piling. The piling, the piling, the piling. No piling, it's just pills. So that's one indicator that immediately tells me that this sweat is not from the 60s at all. Um, another thing is that it doesn't have that distinctive stitching at the bottom. Um, it's raised stitching. Um, and uh, the single stitch on the sleeves obviously are gonna be there. There's no overlock stitching. I don't think we even really looked at a sweat with any overlock stitching. I think this was the only one um, but this is a short sleeve. I'm actually getting an overlock long sleeve in the mail soon, so I'll probably do a review on that. Um, but there's a lot of kind of really nice features about this, like the stitching on the pockets um, and the stitching on the hood, which are kind of like strange. Like you don't see this a lot on it on really old, not really old, but like kind of newer sweats. You don't see this amount of detail on them. Um, but one thing that kind of is a dead giveaway for this one is it's on a pride zip and pride zips are the older ykk zippers that date back to the 60s and 70s um but i do believe that this one is 70s just because of all the features that were discussed um but if it did not have the zipper if it had a ykk zipper i would immediately think this is probably like from the 80s or 90s and this was almost like i said barely vintage sweat so put that in there and we have one more sweat basically like to show so this one is um 70s or 80s um this gold russell tag dates back to the 70s or the 80s um but most likely this is from the 70s um and it has this sort of flock print uh name on it debbie whatever um but we look inside it does not have that like piles it almost has this like sort of blankety feel to it doesn't have that distinctive stitching the collar is is not right man we look at the collar the single stitch collar look at this one double stitch collar single stitch collar double stitch collar single stitch collar as you can see they're not the same dates the sweat newer um the piling dates the sweat newer the stitching on the sleeves dates the sweat newer the short ribbing dates this sweat newer. The single stitch hems dates this sweat newer. 
So really, if this didn't have a tag, you'd have to predict when this was from, honestly. Which it could be from the anywhere from the mid to late 70s all the way up till I'd say like the mid to late 90s, honestly. But if it didn't have this Russell Gold tag, I wouldn't know. I would not know what date this was. I would not know when this was from. The only indicator that this sweat is old is from the tag. So yeah, that's kind of how I date my sweats. Um, and if you guys have any sort of input you'd like to put on, say, oh, you're wrong about this feature, I'd love to hear it because I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on this, but I have been around True Vintage for a while and I do know what to look for when I'm looking for old sweats. So thanks for watching and yeah, peace.